But I want to kind of start from the beginning, your story of coming out as a first-time employee with them to eventually become the CEO. Well, thanks, Patrick. Let me, uh, I'll try to be brief on it, but uh, uh, I initially grew up in the Midwest, so kind of had some of those Midwest values and, uh, and always was interested in finance and being an entrepreneur. And uh, got started in, in college, buying homes, uh, flipping them uh, uh, to um, build some capital, because I figured out over the long run, we all want to try to generate some capital to do what we can do and, uh, and, and go from there. Uh, fortunately, I started that process while I was working, learned how to uh, invest in the markets and stocks and all those things. I became familiar with uh, Warren Buffett back in the early 70s. I was in the Midwest. And then got recruited out to um, Spokane, Washington to manage a group of mutual funds. Took a little 50-person company. And over about six years, we grew that dramatically. Then came up with the idea that in uh, about 1981 or so, that if we could put that culture of uh, entrepreneurism together with the bank, we could really create something special. And I searched around a little bit and found a failing, near failing thrift in the Seattle area called Washington Mutual. It was losing 30 million a year. The FDIC said it had 18 months left before. But I said, I think this is something we could do something with. So we put the companies together. Um, I was able to roll all of my stock that I had. Remember, I took those houses, created that capital, put that into, um, it was actually Murphy Favor is the name, and we rolled that then into Washington Mutual. And uh, so we ended up becoming significant uh, part uh, equity holders in Washington Mutual. And uh, it was still a mutual company, and we said, you know what, let's take it public, which we did. Uh, I, I remember because I had a cost basis of the stock, about 40 cents a share, and uh, we took the company public and ultimately grew the market cap to about $40 billion. So it was a pretty uh, interesting deal. But from the consumer side, what we wanted to do is put together a broad product line, including the things the securities and insurance industries mm -hmm. have, uh, together with the bank and have a little more uh, customer-focused uh, uh, look at things. And we grew that customer base pretty uh, dramatically, up to about 11 million customers. And in the early 2000s, we were growing right at a million customers per year and had uh, built the branching system up to 2,200 and was earning about $4 billion a year. So it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good deal. Uh, as you said, we, ha we received every award you can imagine uh, about uh, best quality of service, best products, because we always tried to give the consumer the best deal out there, either in terms of pricing, better service, we tried to have our employees uh, both engaged, but uh, trying to be a little higher on the uh, customer service front. So we got all the J.D. Powers Award as the best uh, customer service and all those things. Anyway, that was all the good stuff. And uh, that turned out to be part of our Achilles heel. Because as it turns out, the, uh, the moneyed politicians and East Coast people really felt threatened. Because we uh, moved into New York, we were taking huge market share from J.P. Morgan Chase, mm -hmm. from Citigroup, from all those guys, and uh, the New York regular banking regulars didn't like us too much. We weren't their uh, kind of folk. We didn't. Uh, we weren't blue bloods from uh, Harvard and uh, and East Coast schools. We were uh, trying to do stuff for the consumer, and we can go more into depth if you want. Uh, that turned out to be a problem for us when the financial crisis hit. And uh, in, in what way? So was it was it Main Street versus Wall Street where you were not in the circle of Wall Street and you were kind of rubbing them the wrong way? Did, were they not fans of yours? Absolutely. In fact, in our book, we used uh, and, and in some uh, uh, testimony I did when we were talking to Congress and all that, I uh, coined a phrase. We were not too clubby to fail. And uh, just saying it, look, at there's an East Coast club. Mm. It's a pay to play game. Yeah. You, uh, there was a direct correlation of who benefited from who gave the most uh, political money uh, to the guys down there. And, uh, and I think they were a little threatened by this growth of this West Coast uh, uh, outfit that was, uh, was kind of eating, uh, eating their lunch. And, uh, and then when the, uh, the financial crisis hit, uh, we saw politicians, regulators, everybody was panicked, went outside of any normal protocols they have of what they're supposed to do and the like. And they, you know, I feel very strongly that they just inequitably and unfairly treated Washington Mutual and tried to find any excuse they could to uh, give them a sweetheart deal and give it over to J.P. Morgan Chase. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.